maybe we want to talk about the purpose of protection plans. Uh, you know, there's a lot of protection plans out there, a lot of uh, coverages, I should say. Uh, you have car uh, coverage, right? You got full liability. You have some home coverages. They vary. Um, you got to pay a deductible, large deductible. You know, at times you may not have if something was to happen. And you have health insurance. Um, and it has various tiers within your health insurance. It changes uh, often. It looks at your age. It looks at your ethnicity. So we have all of these different coverages, but none of them really are perfect. Uh, you know, it's the one fit, one shoe fit all type deal or one size fit all. Uh, one of the things that, you know, come to mind is uh, writing uh, medication. I have my health insurance and I get a notice uh, in the mail that's saying, hey, Braden's uh, inhaler, his, his emergency inhaler will no longer be covered. Uh, well, I'm like, well, if this is the one thing that he has that's an emergency inhaler, kind of like him taking a full breathing treatment, you would think that that would be covered, right? You, you know, you would think the health insurance, the health, uh, the insurance company would not want um, anybody going to the hospital because that's more things they have to take care of. But they don't cover it. So I have to change insurance. You know, uh, I get another notice saying that actually medication is not covering. It's going to cost me 300 some dollars. So the, these insurance companies that, or different coverages don't cover everything you need, right? You take your car in and guess what? Your insurance is not going to cover your brakes. Your insurance is not going to cover your, your oil change. And at times you can get an accident and they may not cover your car. So it, it's funny that we have all these quote unquote coverages or plans, but none of them are perfect. But today I want to talk about the things that are perfect. The plan that I want to talk about, it is perfect. It does what it should, what it's intended to do. No matter the situation, no matter who you are, no matter your age, this plan does not discriminate. And it's going to cover what needs to be covered. Um, I'm gonna, let's let's look at the, the definitions of a perfect protection plan. So you, you look at the word perfect. It says, say, 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 having all the required. Give me one second. Let's see. Well, it's um, where we're getting feedback here. Uh, the perf having all the required or desirable element qualities or characteristics as good as it possibly can get, right? As good as it possibly can get. It says having all the required and desirable elements, qualities and characteristics, as good as it can get. And then you look at protection. A personal thing that prevents some, someone or something from suffering harm or injury. So now we got the perfect protection, and, and then you, you go look at the plan. A detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. So it's already laid out, right? It, 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 it's, it's a plan that's there to achieve something. So you got a perfect plan, it's, it's desirable. It, it makes sure no harm come to you and it's gonna achieve something. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I, I got to this. Uh, if you know me, I'm kind of a um, uh, uh, germaphobe, I, I would say. Um, so when COVID hit, uh, it was a, it was real hard for me uh, to, to deal with, right? You gotta constantly have hand sanitizer and you know, if it was up to me, I'd have had a belt full of like hand sanitizer and wipes and every time something like this, I might've been, and wiping the kids down, right? If I could put the hand sanitizer around their mouth, they'd have been around their mouth. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, we end up putting our house up for sale during COVID, probably. Uh, it ended up being a blessing, but at the time, it, you know, with me being like that, 
every time somebody came in the house, we had to go clean the entire house. You know, the, the groceries, right? You, you were scared to go to the store. Um, so we had our groceries, uh, you know, brought to the car and we had boxes in a garage. I kid you not, my groceries sat in the garage for three days. You know, they said, hey, you know, these germs, are, this bacteria fades away in three days in 72 hours. My groceries sat in the garage for three days. So we looked at, we timed it and every three, you know, every so on, we, so far we would go get groceries because it's on bringing those groceries in, right? So it's like you have to count your inventory in your refrigerator and make sure you have enough for three days before you can bring other food back in. It was a little much, um, but I'm going somewhere with this. So we ended up selling the house and I ended up, we ended up moving. And I ended up uh, here recently, I ended up getting that extra storage. And I called the lady up and I, I got a storage. I'm trying to plan for things for the new house, right? Buying things and putting it in the storage. So I had to buy when I, when, I, when we move in. So I, I, I call a lady and I, and, she, and I go up there and I, I make an appointment and I give her all the information, my license, my credit card, everything she needs. That's fine. And she said, I said, well, I don't need it right now. She said, that's okay. We'll, 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 we'll hold on to it and we'll run the card uh, when you want to just call back up here. And, and uh, my assistant will be up here. She'll be able to help me. So the, the, the day before I needed the storage, or the day of, I called the lady. And it was after Thanksgiving. It was that Saturday after Thanksgiving. And the lady picks up the phone, and she, you know, she, I introduced myself and tell her where I am. She said, oh, yeah, I see your name here. Um, but I don't have all your information. I need your license, and I need the cards. And I said, well, she, she took all that. She said, well, I don't see it. And she kept telling me, well, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, my Thanksgiving was great. How was yours? She said, I was just glad that my husband can be with me because he has cancer. I'm just glad he was able to share another Thanksgiving with me. I said, oh, okay. She said, okay, well, you know what I can do? I can send you a link and you can do it all over the phone. She sent me the link. I couldn't, the link did not work. She sent me the link again. I still couldn't get nothing. So I had to physically drive up there and give her my information again, right? Well, of course I didn't want to do it, but I went up there and, and did it. And so as the lady was talking to me, she asked me again, how was my Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was great, you know? And she started talking about her situation. She started talking about how she grew up in an orphanage and, and how a young man, a child, a nine-year-old introduced her to, to God. She was like seven. And she said, at that time, I didn't believe in adults. I didn't trust adults. She said, I didn't trust adults because of the situation. They were trying to take her siblings from, from her. She didn't have her, her mom. She didn't have her dad. And they were going, she was the oldest. And they were trying to take her siblings from her. And since she was the oldest, she felt like nobody wanted her. So she continued to tell me everything that went on in her life as she got older and older until she's at the age of where she's at now. And she was in her um, probably mid sixties, but she told me everything. And, and it was so awesome that she was telling me stuff. God was telling me stuff about her. And, and she started, you know, talking about how awesome God was, even though she went through so much. She told me when she was a baby in Christ and everything and how she was off and on and, and how she, she, I would say, she said how she almost lost her life. And she, she just, and how she met God and, and everything. But the awesome part of this was, God told me I need to pray for her. Now I sit back, we in COVID, I have my mask on, I have no hand sanitizer with me. God, you want me to pray for this lady? We're about six feet apart, she's on the other side, side of the, the counter. Lord, you want me to pray from, for her from afar? Or do I need to pray for her, like, next to one another? Do I need to? He told me again, you need to pray for her. Oh, man, I know what that means. Uh, I, I can't quite pray from her from where she's sitting at. I said, okay, man. And she's still telling me a story. And I said, 
you know, I let her know that I was, eventually I let her know that I was a minister. And because beforehand, she told me how God was going to bless me. And, you know, it's a, it's a blessing for you to be here. And it's just, and I said, yeah, I'm a minister. And, and I thank you and everything. And I said, but I got to pray for you. I said, God told me to pray for you. Demarcus, the, the flesh, did not want to hold hands with this, this lady, right? We were in COVID. I hadn't held hands with anybody besides my wife, my kids, my, my, my close family. But God, you want me to hold hands with a stranger. Okay, God, and you want this stranger not only to, to, to me to hold hands, but you want this stranger to be breathing the air that I breathe. The air that I'm about to exhale, she's going to exhale, I'm going to have to inhale. And at that time, God said, the, uh, the Holy Spirit, it was, it was so calm. And he said, I got you. He said, I got you. I said, you know what, God, you're right. Because you having me do this. You got to have me. So I, I held the lady hand and I, and I prayed for her. And I, and I prayed and prayed and prayed. And she was crying. And I was crying, of course, right? And um, she gave me a big hug when I got done. And I know I just had said God got me, but she hugging me now. Oh Lord! But oh, okay. So I prayed for her, and, and eventually, you know, she wanted to meet Ashley, and and you know, God told me to bless her, and I blessed her, and whatnot, and and I brought Ashley up there. Um, I think the next day, or, or or something like that, or maybe that same day. And the lady's going to talk to Ashley. I'm thinking she's going to talk to Ashley outside of the car and like just wave and say hello and thank you. And she actually actually let her window down and the lady jumped in the car and hugged Ashley. Ashley didn't have on a match or anything. She was like, what is going on? And at that time, it was like, God, God, don't even worry about it. And so that, that brings me to the perfect plan. You know, God was dealing me with dealing with me about his plan and how he protects us. And, and Marcus, you, your family hasn't got sick this entire time. COVID's been around for 10 months or so. A little longer than that. It's actually been around for a year, but we only knew about it for about, you know, 10 months or so. And he, he said, I got you. Don't, don't even worry about it. And, and this, let's go ahead and, and, and read. Um, turn with me to Psalm 91. 91 and 1. And, and Psalm 91 and 1 reads, I'm going to wait till the slide changes. There we go. He that dwelleth in a secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And, and we're going to stay in Psalms. We're not going to go uh, to different scriptures. We're going to stay right here and we're going to read a, a, a few of them. But I, I want you to understand what God is saying to his people. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. That abide means to stay permanent. Right, so you need to permanently be, it says, under the shadows. Now, if you think about one's shadow, in order to be under someone's shadow, you have to be pretty close to them. Right, I, I tell Braden, uh, as he, and I still do, when he was little, we crossing the street or going across a parking lot to be on my hip. If I can't hold his hand, he needs to be on my hip. Well, Braden would be in my shadow, right? So understand, God is saying, hey, I need you to permanently be, permanently be on my shadow. And guess what? It's even better if you can be on his hip and not in his shadow. You don't want to be far off on the part of his shadow, right? You want to be closer in his shadow. You don't want to be in the middle. So the closer you can get to the shadow, the more he has for you. Under, understand that. Let, let's, let's read uh, verse 2. Oh, 
Okay. Verse 2 says, And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in him will I trust. We're going to look at the words refuge and fortress. Now, I'm going to let you know, Moses composed Psalms 91. And, and you, you have to think about it, Moses' story. Moses was a, a, a babe, and, and his mother had to put him in a, in a, in a river, right? Because the, the Pharaoh wanted to kill all the, the children because it was more of the Hebrews than it was of the Egyptians. So in order to, to, to get rid of the population, you got to kill all the males. That way you can have any more kids, right? But if you look through it, Moses ended up being given away. Uh, the Pharaoh family ended up finding him. Moses, as a child, his mother actually took care of him, uh, to, to, if, if you didn't know that. Um, Moses ended up killing someone because he seen uh, one of the Hebrews being beat. Moses ended up killing someone because he seen a Hebrews being beat. The lady ended up telling on Moses, the one he saved, ended up telling on him. Um, and Moses ended up, you know, leaving Egypt and whatnot. You, you kind of know the story from there. But I, I go to say this, that Moses wrote this. And, and it's interesting that he wrote, he put the word refuge before fortress. Now, why didn't he say he's my fortress and my refuge? But there's it's the reason why I said that there's a clear understanding of in order for something to be your fortress, it has to be your refuge first. That word refuge means seeking protection. So I can't have something to be in my fortress without it being my refuge first. And, and the word fortress means it's my defense. It's my stronghold. So Moses said, God, he's my shelter. He's my stronghold. It's fortified. And in him I will trust. And, and I was going to say this part later on and somewhere in my message, but you know, I spoke to my mother-in-law uh, earlier this week. And, and she called up and she was kind of nervous. You can hear it in her voice. And, and she went over to family member house and, and the entire house had came down with COVID. And she was going over there to see how her brother was doing and whatnot. But she didn't know that everybody had COVID. And my, my mother-in-law called up there. And she was she was concerned. I, I could hear it in her voice. But it bothered me that she was that concerned. And, and you know, she's talking to, to Ashley and, and her son. And and I just I just wanted to jump in and say, Mama, you don't have to worry about it. I said, God got you. He got you covered. You don't have to worry about anything. And so for, for children of Christ, his sons, you got to understand that God is your refuge. He is your fortress. No matter the situation, he, he, he's with us. Now, let's read uh, verse 3. And the word says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snares and follow, the snares of the follower, and from the nuisance, ple pleasance, pestilence, sorry. So you, you, you're looking at that word, deliver. It's a very, you know, common word. It's very calming, and, and you know, God will deliver thee. But the, the word actually means, it, it's, it looks calm on paper, but what the word means is he's going to snatch. It, and that's a violent thing, right? If you snatch someone. So what God is saying here is, when the enemy comes to try to trap you, when there's a trap, when, it, when, it, when people come against you, when, it, when they're trying to trap you, when there's things going on, plays going on around you, he said he's going to snatch you from those things. That was very interesting to me to understand. No matter the circumstance, he said, hey, 
He's your refuge. He's your fortress. And when the enemy comes, he's going to snatch you from harm. So as, as Christians, we have to understand that God got you. Not only is he your fortress. So when I'm with him, I'm, I'm, and I'm always with him, right? Uh, he's my fortress. He, he's When I'm a fortress, I'm, I'm behind. I'm covered. The enemy's on the other side. But when I go out, at times, God had to snatch us from what the enemy's trying to do. You can't see at times how many times God has to snatch you from situations, from the enemy traps. Look at here. As the man of the house, I can protect Ashley and my family at home, right? I, I can do my best to protect them. But I can't protect my children when they go to school. I can't protect Ashley when she's traveling. I can't protect them when they go to the grocery store. The only person that can protect them is God. That's it. There's nothing I can do but pray and ask God to protect them. But he's our, our protector. He's our deliverer. He's our snatcher. When I said that word deliverer, he'll snatch them out of harm's way. And as many times he, he's, he's moved on your behalf without you knowing that he snatched you out of harm's way. Let's, let's uh, read four. And I'm almost finished. Give me about five more minutes of your time and, and we'll be closing out. Um, and four reads, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thou shield and buckler. Now he's going to cover me under the feathers, under his feathers, other verses and pinions. I'm under his wings, and there's trust in his wings, right? It, it, it's trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now, if you think about those three things in that one verse. He's going to cover me with his feathers. Well, if God covered me with, with his feathers, that's probably more than enough, right? But not only that, he said he's going to put a shield. He's, he's, his shield should be his truth. The truth is, his word's going to be my shield. If you understand, he said, his word can't turn back void, right? If it's speaking, if he's speaking, it's gonna to come to pass. But but that wasn't enough. He said, not only that, then I'm not gonna cover you with my, my feathers. I got a shield for you as well, but I also got a buckler. So you know, me imagining God's shield, it's you know, his feathers is probably pretty big, right? But then he got this big old shield he's gonna cover me with. He said, Well, God, that's probably more than enough, right? He said, no, but then I got a buckler. And a buckler is another shield that the when they was in the army, they would wear a shield on their arm. Just in case they lost their big shield, they got, they got a shield to protect themselves. So he said he's going to do, he's going to cover you with his feathers. He's going to shield you, and he's going to have a buckler for you, a, another shield. At the end of it all, God said, you don't have to worry about it. I got you covered. Now, that's a protection plan. He said, hey, all I'm asking you to do is dwell in a secret place with me. Get to know me. Spend time with me. And as you get to know me, guess what? You got to be in my shadow. You have to be in my shadow as you spend time with me and you get to know me. Moses spent plenty of time with God. Moses was definitely in his shop. Moses wrote this, saying that he was all alone by himself. He didn't have nobody. The Egyptians was after him. His sister and brother at times went against him. The Hebrews was after him. I'm trying to lead you out of Egypt, and you murmur and complain about everything I do. As an individual, Marcus, I'd be like, okay, uh, well, you know what? Y'all can stay here. I'm gone. But Moses understood what he had to do. 
Even better yet, Moses wrote a song about it, right? He wrote how God continued to protect him, continued to cover him through everything that he'd been through. So, so I would say this. Remember what God has brought you through. And write down your song to God. Not to me, not to the apostle, not to your spouse. But write it down like Moses did. And your words don't have to be profound or anything. Let it come from the heart. Letting God know who he is. And that you understand what he's done for you. Write down your song. And if you need some help, go back to Psalm 91 and 1 and start there. Use the word refuge, how, how he was your refuge, how he was your fortress in, in, in situations. I got plenty of stories to tell you where, where he protected us, where he covered us from the enemy. Plenty. Where at times you would be stressed out, at times I would be stressed out because of things my wife wanted, through, not even things I'm going through. I'm going to read this last scripture for you so you can get it. Make sure you understand what God is saying to ensure you understand what he's saying. And it's going to be Psalms 10 and 11. I'm sorry, 11 and 12. And, and it reads, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. And if he was to go back and, and read some of the verses up, it say, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. He said, a, a, a thousand shall fall at the right side, 10,000. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at the right hand. But nothing's going to come towards you. And if you want to look at the COVID, I mean, a lot of people have died. And at one time, you still here. If you hear my voice, if you see my picture, you still here. That's something to praise God for right then and there. That's something to write your song about right then and there. You know, we had a few people that got on it. Prophetess uh, mother came down with COVID. Well, that's what the the the, the test I said, I guess, said. <laughs> but God said, no, she don't have it. Now, how do you have COVID? No symptoms. How do you have COVID at her age and not be sick? They said, oh, somebody at her age, she shouldn't even be here. They said, now, She's up in age. She got she got different illnesses going on. She got COVID. She walking around stronger than a horse. The test said she had COVID, but she didn't have COVID. God said, I got her covered. Another reason to write a song. Sister Danita I got, got on a couple weeks ago. Right? It may have been last week. And she said, I had, I had COVID and I had to and I had to Pray over myself. My legs weren't, 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 weren't working right, and, and I had to pray over. And as I prayed, it, it, I, I got stronger and stronger and stronger. Glory be to God. Because He's our perfect protection plan. It said, For He shall give His angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, what was interesting about that, that he didn't say he shall give his angel. You would think one angel would be more than enough. He said he's going to give his angels, angels, more than one, to cover thee. And then they brought me back to Elijah and a servant. And as they was coming after Elijah, and, and a servant said, oh, man, are we surrounded? The servant had to think, oh, they're about to kill us. 
a lion, here I am following you, you're about to get me killed. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open thy eyes. Open the servant eyes that he can see that it's more of us than them. So you have to understand that as long as you and God shout, it's going to always be more of us than them. It's going to always be more of us than the enemy. It's going to be always be more of us than those that's cursing your name, that's using you, that's backstabbing. It's going to always be more of us than them. So why are you worried? There's no reason to worry. As long as you're in the shadow, and we know how we got to get in the shadow, you don't have nothing to worry about. He's going to cover you with his, with his feathers. He's going to cover you with his shield. He's going to cover you with his buckler. And he got angels coming down. Not one, but he put an S on the end. He got multiple angels coming down to cover you. He said there's more of us than them. If he said it, it's going to come to pass. He said, I would never leave you nor forsake you. Verse 12. I'm going to close with this. Thy shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. I'm sorry, he said, they shall bear. And once again, he's talking about his angels, right? I just wanted you to make, sh make sure you understood what he was saying. He didn't say, the angels should bear thee up in thy, their hands, unless thou buy thy foot against a stone. No. Now, I'm more sure only one angel is more than enough to, 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 to put in, in his hands. But he said, they, meaning more than one, going to keep you in their hands. I really want everybody to get that God got you covered. His plan is perfect for you. And yes, we're going to go through some things. Right? Moses went through a lot of things in his life. At the end of the day, guess what? God still had him covered. Moses had an entire army, an entire nation after him. One man. He had him covered. David had Saul, Saul after him. He was covered. So think about all the stories you read in the Bible. All the different people God covered. Why would He do the same for you? Well, Marcus, because I, I wouldn't. I'm not in the Bible. That's that's why He wouldn't. Are you His son? Well, you're in the Bible. Who He wrote the Bible for? He wrote it for us. Not because He didn't care about you. But because he wanted you to understand everything he would do to protect you. He wrote a big book of instructions, of covenants, of benefits for you so that you can understand everything that he had for you. And all he's asking you to do is continue to follow after him. Continue to spend time with him. Make sure that you're giving him the glory. Make sure you're giving him the honor. He didn't tell you life was going to be easy. He told you that if they're against Jesus, they're going to be against you. But he had Jesus too, didn't he? Jesus said he can bring down a, a, a legion of angels. 
He the one to cut the man. Don't you know I can call a, a whole army of angels down here if I wanted to? Jesus didn't say he can call down one, did he? Now, it was only a handful of men out there that, that was in front of Jesus at the time. Jesus said, don't you know I can call a, a whole army of angels down here? God is going to keep you. God is going to cover you. But it's our time now to write our song to God. Understanding that he's got us this far. And he's going to continue to carry you. He's going to continue to keep you in the palm of his hands. He's going to continue to cover you. But spend time with him. Praise him. Lift his name up on heart. Get to know him. He is our Prince of Peace. He is our provider. He's the great I am. He's our source of everything that we need. Get to know him. Amen. Glory be to God. The doors of the church are open. If you need prayer, if you want to Just tell somebody how thankful you are. What God's brought you through. If you want somebody to just pray with you. If you want somebody to just pray with you. Uh, the numbers will be on your screen. Amen. Glory be to God.